Thank you so much, Dan. So, um, can can you hear me, Brian? Am I audible? You are great. Awesome. Um, hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Raja Roy from NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, and my my co-author is Shweta Choudhury from uh, University of California, Berkeley. Uh, the paper that we are presenting here, it's a working paper, uh, it's work in progress, so we would welcome any suggestions or comments that you might have on this paper. Next slide, please. So the research questions that we are pursuing for this paper are, number one, uh, what is commercial space and how is it different from the quote-unquote old space? And how is the commercial space shaping the entrepreneurial actions? Next slide. So what exactly is the old space? The old space business model is where NASA was the lead user. So we are borrowing the term from uh, Eric von Hippel at MIT. And so NASA was the lead user and NASA was also the designer of the complex systems. So in other words, like the moon buggy, and there's a sketch from Boeing's uh, uh, documentation, uh, was designed by Boeing and uh, with, uh, with the Marshall Space Flight Center. But the new space business model is somewhat different, and I'll come to that. But uh, next slide, please. So the old space business model is a vertically integrated business model in a way that NASA defines what needs to be done and how is it going to be done. What do you design? How do you go to the destination? And then how do you come back? Um, how do you maintain presence on the destination? And by presence, essentially what I mean is uh, three days and three hours, that was the maximum presence on the moon, uh, a single uh, continuous presence by moon, on the moon by, by, uh, by humans. And that time period is going to become very important as we go forward, and we'll see that in some of the later slides. And so in this old space business model, NASA procures the capabilities, NASA incurs the total cost, NASA defines the system requirements. But the new space business model is going to be quite different. Next slide, please. So the new space business model is a modularized business model. And in this modularized business model, uh, NASA defines what needs to be done, but the industry defines how is it going to be accomplished. So NASA and industry share the cost. They make, NASA makes the milestone payments. Uh, NASA is the lead user to some extent, not completely. But in certain modules, and we'll see that uh, in a few minutes, NASA is still the lead user, just like the old integrated business model. But the entrepreneurial firms are the designers of majority of the complex systems. Next slide, please. So we take the definition of uh, the, the module or the modular system from Curtis Baldwin and Kim Clark's book, Design Rules 2000. And we see that in the new space which is evolving, there are at least two different modules. Number one is access and number two is presence. And we are going to go through these uh, modules in much more detail. So uh, next slide, please. So what exactly is access? Access is how do we reach Moon or Mars? And again, our study is mostly about the cislunar and the cis-Martian space, uh, and not so much as the orbital or the suborbital spaces. So how do we go to the Moon and Mars? And uh, so what are the advanced communication systems, the landing payloads, and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. Now, in this module, the access module, there are a number of different players, uh, ULA, SpaceX, Blue Origin, and, and many others. The interesting thing is that cost drivers here are reusability. And reusability has been creeping up over a period of time. So going back to the Apollo systems, 1960s and 1970s, were hardly reusable. Then the space shuttle was supposed to be re completely re reusable. So uh, when the design started, it was supposed to be a two-stage fully reusable system, eventually ended up with a one and a half stage uh, partially reusable system. Uh, so, But reusability is a cost driver. And so is the lifting capacity. So for example, with the Artemis three mission, we're looking at 46 times to be taken to the moon or 36 tons to Mars. Um, the other, the third cost driver is the transit time. So the faster we can reach the destination, the less is the fuel cost and so on and so forth. However, to achieve any of these cost drivers, the, the engineers, the, the firms will have to mitigate a lot of interdependencies between the various components within the complex systems. So what exactly are the interdependencies? Next slide, please. This is a chart that I took from NASA, and uh, this is the SLS Artemis manufacturing system. 
So there are different components out here. Um, the, the, we have the core stage, we have the boosters. The core stage kind of probably reminds you of the, the fuel tank of the space shuttle system. And the boosters are the two sides of the space shuttle system, if you recall that, were kind of similar. The interesting thing here is that because of interdependencies, you cannot design one system at a time. So they are interdependent. The performance of one system affects the performance of the other system, and so on and so forth. Now, reusability, to achieve reusability or any of the cost drivers, the, 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 the systems have to be designed in a way that they build on each other. In other words, um, if you go back to the Apollo systems, almost the entire system was non-reusable. The capsule would come down, splash on the uh, Pacific Ocean, and, 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 and the astronauts would be brought back home. Uh, space shuttle, certain parts were reusable. So, for example, the boosters were reusable, but the fuel tank, the central portion, was not. So it was lost in space. Uh, so to build on, to, to achieve interdependencies and to design the system, which are reusable, uh, the interdependencies have to be taken care of. Next slide, please. Now, to achieve reusable systems through the help of interdependencies, again, well, is nothing new. We knew about it uh, as uh, uh, NASA started designing the, the space shuttle. So Del Tischler, who was the director of the shuttle uh, technology office uh, when the space shuttle was being designed, in his 1969 paper, he showed that, look, a fully reusable space shuttle will have different components. And each one of those components will affect the performance of almost each and every other component. So interdependencies will have to be taken uh, into account while designing a reusable system. Next slide, please. So the challenge in the access module is to overcome a myriad of interdependencies, to create a reusable system, and to lower the cost of access. Next slide, please. The second module is presence, which is once we reach Moon and Mars, what do we do? How do we take care of the dust problems? How do you mitigate the dust? In situ resource utilization, how do we generate oxygen or food or recycle the water and so on and so forth? That's part of the second module. Next slide, please. So in this module, again, there are a number of other players who are playing, uh, who, who are trying to create value, for example, Boeing, Northrop Grumman. Now, to have a sustainable presence on Moon or Mars, it is not just overcoming interdependencies, similar to the access module, but there's an additional dimension out here, and that is the uncertainty dimension. So the interdependencies come in because many of the systems being used for the presence, like the lander system, the rover, uh, the, the, the power supply, which is either going to be the nuclear energy, the nuclear thermal, or the nuclear electric, whatever it is, they will have to overcome the interdependencies, similar to the access module. But in addition to that, unlike the three day and three hours that we spent on Moon for uh, the maximum duration that we spent on Moon, for the Martian explorations, the duration of operation is going to be at least 1,200 days, if not longer. If you're talking about sustainable presence on the surface of Mars, it's going to be much more, uh, much more than that. So the uncertainty that creeps in is, if we are going to design the nuclear system, are they going to work? for 1,200 days. What happens if they break down? Where are we going to get the, the, the spare parts from? Uh, will the system be able to weather the dust storms on Mars and so on? So to design every system, we'll have to overcome not just the interdependencies, but also the uncertainties. Next slide, please. So specifically for the nuclear system, to, to, over, to have the systems for Mars, we have to overcome interdependencies and uncertainties. Again, that the knowledge goes back 50 years or even more. So Glenn Seaborg, Nobel laureate in chemistry, in his 1968 paper, he, he, he looked at the different power generation systems which were available. And he argued that, look, for, a, for an exploration to moon, which is two days or three days, he said that, look, the fuel cells, the batteries, the technologies that we have at that point in time were, were good enough to meet the power needs. Now, for Mars, on the other hand, which is two to three years, now note that the, the x-axis in this chart uh, is the logarithmic scale. So Mars is three years. Over there, we need the nuclear reactors because the fuel cells and the batteries are probably not going to be enough. And so he argued that we have to overcome the interdependencies and uncertainties to have the systems for the nuclear reactors, for example, to, 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 uh, to provide us power on the surface of Mars. Next slide, please. 
here are some examples of uh, some of the systems that are going to help us be on the surface of Moon and Mars. This is the human landing system that is being designed. Uh, next slide, please. And once we are on Moon or Mars, we need, again, as I said, many other systems which will help us maintain our presence over there. This short, this figure which I took from NASA, uh, again, if you look at the lower right-hand side of this figure, around 2020, uh, late 2020s, early 2030s, the, the lunar rover is going to be there. Again, as I mentioned earlier, is the lunar rover be able to perform for 1,200 hours or 1,200 days or even longer? Um, what happens if we need the spare parts? Those are the uncertainties that will have to be overcome to maintain our presence on Moon and Mars. Next slide, please. So the challenge in the presence module is we have to overcome not just the interdependencies, but also the uncertainties, and to create a sustainable presence on Moon or Mars for 1,200 days or longer. Next slide, please. So given that the, the, the space a system is becoming much more modularized. So what exactly is commercial space? From the vantage of an entrepreneurial firm, the commercial space is where the entrepreneurial firms create and capture value or appropriate value, but differently depending on different modules. So for example, with the access module, it is creating value by mitigating interdependencies uh, and appropriating value by stimulating the demand to act to, to, uh, to stimulate demand through lower access cost. However, in presence, it is creating value by mitigating interdependencies and by mitigating uncertainties. And appropriating value is quite different than the appropriating value in access module. Here, NASA is the keystone. So NASA is going to do the stuff on, on surface of Moon or Mars, and the entrepreneurial firms are going to capture value with the help of NASA. So NASA's rollout here is almost similar to the, the, the integrated business model in the Apollo or the space shuttle era. Next slide, please. Now, the fact that systems get modularized is nothing new. It has happened before. We know it has happened. Business history tells us that computer systems got modularized at some, one point in time. So Baldwin and Clark, in their book, they look at the, the IBM System 360, which was the first modular computer, 1961. However, the big difference between computers and the space modularization is here. So this is the task structure matrix that Baldwin and Clark looked at for the, uh, for, uh, the, the IBM System 360. Over here, the interdependencies were known. Given the prior experience that IBM had, they knew the interdependencies uh, or how one component affected the performance of the other component. So those diagonal, the, the gray boxes along the diagonal in this chart were known to IBM. In case of NASA, as space is evolving, getting more modularized, those uncertainties are still not clear. They hopefully will get clear over a period of time, but not yet. Next slide, please. So, how exactly is this modular system evolving then? It's evolving in access module by mitigating interdependencies, but the efforts out here are pretty much decoupled from NASA's needs. In presence, however, what we find is that the, the, the search for solution is going on by mitigating interdependencies and uncertainties, but the needs are pretty much coupled, very strongly coupled to NASA's needs. Next slide, please. Now, given that the modular systems are evolving, modular uh, space is evolving, and that the, the strategies for value creation and capture are quite different depending on different modules, what are the implications for entrepreneurs, number one, and what are the implications for NASA going forward? So space is modular from an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur's perspective, and the antecedents of that modularity are the interdependencies in access or interdependencies and uncertainty in presence. And the consequence of the modularity is that strategies for value capture or appropriation are going to be different on, in different modules. However, the implications for NASA are somewhat different. Next slide, please. The implication for NASA is that the modularized space is, has come through, through an antecedent of the integrated business model. But going forward, the, the, uh, in the modularized business model, the capabilities that are going to be required for different modules are going to be different. Now, if history teaches us anything in computers, when computer systems got modularized, the organizational structure of IBM changed drastically. 
Not only that, the industry structure of computer manufacturing changed drastically. And similarly, with the advent of the modularized space, it is quite likely that the, the organizational structure for NASA, which has served it really well in the integrated business model era, may have to be altered going forward to face the modularized space. So uh, maybe NASA will need different capabilities to deal with the different modules that are going to uh, prop up in, 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 in the modularized business. Uh, next slide, please. So pretty much that's what we have in this paper. Um, as I said, there's still a working paper. Your comments and um, are, are, are welcome. If you want to reach out to uh, either one of us, either me or Shrikat, our email IDs are right here. We look forward to your comments. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening.